thank you. I have this idea that every person deserves the right to be themselves. Simple, right? Certainly should be. But for some, this doesn't come so easily. I'll use my family's experience as an example. So just over 12 years ago, my husband Chris and I were expecting our first child, and we decided that we were for go finding out the biological sex before birth. Why? Well, obviously, we wanted the ultimate surprise. Would our baby have a penis or a vagina? Would they like trucks or dolls? Pink or blue? Will they make a dollar 79 cents for the same job? Ultimately, we had a girl, or at least her genitals said as much, and her clear identification as a girl is the very reason why, in fact, when we were expecting our second child, we did find out the biological sex before birth. Our daughter, Thea, who was four at the time, was clear that if she wasn't getting a sister, there was going to be trouble. Naturally, we wanted to prepare her for the worst. Thankfully, we didn't have to do that. This new baby had a vagina. Clearly a girl, right? So before I move forward with our story, I do need to clarify one thing, and that is that when you have a transgender child, uh, names and pronouns can be tricky, particularly when speaking in the past tense. And so while I will sometimes refer to my second child as Nora and she or her, I'm only doing so for the ease of storytelling. This child is a boy. We just didn't know it yet. So... <laughs> So starting at about the age of three, Nora began to act out with an anger and an intensity that we were simply unprepared for. Um, she also began to pretend to be a boy, but only at home, and if we ever shared this with anyone outside the home, she was livid. She also began to reject all things feminine, whether that be clothing, hairstyle, toys, you name it. And again, we were okay with this exploration. We are liberal-minded Portlanders, after all. You're not going to put my kid in a box. We thought, hey, we've got a tomboy. But then the question started. So girls have a vagina and boys have a penis. Do boys always have a penis? So this, again, she's three, and this question came after we had read a book together called It's Not the Stork, and uh, one of the things that this book explains is the differences between so-called boy bodies and girl bodies, and my three-year-old was looking to me for exceptions. How do I make my body become a boy's body? Mommy, why didn't you grow me into a boy? And then the acting out got worse, much worse, hitting, punching, scratching, kicking, lashing out at all of us at every turn, even the dog. This child had complete meltdowns. We called them storms, multiple times per day, every day. She flat out refused to cooperate with the most basic requests. I recall saying to Chris that I didn't remember it being this hard with Thea. My four-year-old told me that she hated me and wished I was dead. My four-year-old. I thought my kids would be teenagers before they disliked me that much. <laughs> and yet, all of this was followed by a deep and heartbreaking shame and remorse. Mommy, why am I so mean? I don't want to be so mean. I know I'm still learning. Can you help me learn to not be so mean? By the time kindergarten rolled around, uh, Nora was in full-on depression. About halfway through the year, her teacher, who had known our family for several years, said that it seemed like the light that she had come into the school year with had dimmed. My five-year-old's light was going out. Shortly thereafter, she started to scratch her face to the point of bleeding. Our pediatrician and two separate allergists were perplexed. They said there were no signs of allergies or dermatitis. Could this be stress, they asked. So finally, after two years of clear identity struggle, we sought the help of a therapist, um, particularly a therapist that specialized in gender dysphoria, the distress that a person feels when their biological sex and gender identity seem to be out of alignment. And it took several sessions before Nora would open up but once she did, it became clear how much this kid was suffering. She told our therapist that she hated herself because she was weird. 
my five-year-old hated herself. No person should ever have to feel that way, and certainly no five-year-old. Thankfully, on February 23, 2016, everything changed. Nora met a kid just like her, was the same age, was born a biological female, was beginning to, to present to the world as a boy. And when the child's mother introduced herself and said, my child wants to be, or my child was born a girl and wants to be a boy, Nora lit up, practically jumped on her and said, I want to be a boy too. Now, this wasn't something that was shared with other people, especially not a complete stranger. We talked that night about the significance of meeting this other child. My husband, Chris, said, see, there are other kids, other people that feel this way, that know this about themselves. Nora just smiled, content and relaxed, a state that our family hadn't experienced in quite some time. She'd been playing around with different boy names at home. Zane and Kevin and Travis were favorites, and we shared that if we had known that he was going to be a boy at birth, we would have named him Eli. Well, the next day, we were on a fucking bullet train to boy town. <laughs> yeah, this train was unstoppable. <laughs> that day, without asking us, without telling us, our kid started introducing himself as Eli. And suffice it to say that that 48-hour period was the most terrifying of mine and Chris's lives, but not Eli's. It was his absolute best. This kid marched into his kindergarten classroom that morning and reintroduced himself to his classmates. And when he did, instead of speaking with his shoulders down in a soft voice and looking at the floor as Nora would have, he stood tall and he spoke loud and proud, and he looked directly at his classmates. He told them, I am Eli, and I am a boy in my heart. Thank you. <clears throat> now the compassion and nonchalance that these kids exhibited is a thing of beauty. They shared that they were so glad to have a new friend who was really an old friend. They were worried about the logistics of getting Eli's locker and book box corrected with the correct name. <laughs> um, one of the girls in the class was even concerned that there were now more boys in the classroom than there were girls. <laughs> and one kid said, but I thought Nora was a boy. <laughs> he was. And I can tell you, over two years later, that this is a non-issue for these kids. In the weeks that followed, there was one storm, one, again, this was every day, multiple times per day. When I told Eli that he seemed much happier now, that he could be a boy, he said, yeah, I just don't feel so mean anymore, Mommy. To be completely honest, our lives had been totally transformed. I told Chris it was like we'd been living with the volume cranked up to 10 and someone finally mercifully turned it down. Now, I don't know how much each of you know about biological sex and gender identity, but my family's gotten a crash course and it is not this simplified two sizes fits all thing that we're socialized to believe. In that context, I wanna make two clear points. Number one, having a gender identity that differs from your physical body isn't a choice, okay? This is no choice. And it isn't easy. Most of society makes sure of that. It's something that cannot be willed away. I can't force Eli to grow his hair out and wear a dress and suddenly make him feel like a girl any more than any of you male identifying folks in the crowd could do the same. If you don't believe me, ask yourself when you decided on your gender. Could you just choose otherwise? Number two, the statistics are terrifying. Fewer than 10% of the homeless population, or excuse me, of the general population, identifies as LGBTQ, and yet more than 40% of homeless youth 
identify as LGBTQ. This is because they are routinely kicked out of their homes for being who they are, for being who they cannot change, and yet living on the street is more appealing than living a lie. A full 63% of trans people have been bullied, evicted, physically or sexually assaulted, have lost jobs, or have experienced homelessness, or have been denied medical treatment even, as a result of their being trans, and yet, they are persistent, consistent, and insistent as to who they are. Again, not a choice. This. This may be the single most important thing I will ever say, so please listen. 41 of transgender kids that go through their experience without the support of their families and communities attempt to end their lives. 41%. As a parent, when you're faced with a statistic like that, your choice has been made. You support your kid, plain and simple. It is the easiest thing to do, and it's literally your first job as a parent. So while Eli has no choice, Chris and I do, and we choose to have a living son and not a dead daughter. Since Eli has socially transitioned, I tell anyone who will listen about his story because I love my kid and he has courageously fought his way to happiness and I want to celebrate that. And because I believe in my heart that if others know what life is like for these kids, then maybe I can open some hearts and minds and in turn create a safe space for my son to be who he has always known he is. But this is beyond me and this is beyond Eli. Every transgender person deserves the right to be themselves, to live without fear and without judgment, to know that they are valued and seen and important. My ask is that you honor this sentiment, that you help carry forward my idea. To do so, we must all be allies. So what does it mean to be an ally to the transgender community, I hope you're thinking? <laughs> you're in luck, because I came with answers. <laughs> the first thing you need to know as an ally is that much of what we've been socialized to believe is simply inaccurate. To start, biological sex and gender identity are not the same, okay? They are two completely separate and distinct human characteristics. Biological sex, now I'm greatly oversimplifying here, but this represents your body, the parts that you're born with, and gender identity, this is an inherent sense of self. It's who you are, and it is distinctly separate from your body, yet it also has a biological basis. In fact, research shows that gender identity is developed in the brain, and it does so at a separate time in utero than our biological sex characteristics develop. So to be clear, I know myself to be female, and it isn't because of my body, and it's not because of who I love, and it's not because of my clothing or hairstyle choices. It is because I have a developmentally defined sense of who I am, and each of you do too. And while most of the time these two characteristics are in sync, they are not inextricably tied to one another. And their being out of sync, while less common, is still normal. <sighs> Lastly, speak up challenge transphobic remarks or jokes, whether you are standing in the Trader Joe's checkout line or your Thanksgiving dinner celebration. Do not let others denigrate or make fun of transgender people in your presence. This is my son. I urge each of you here today, do not be a passive ally. Be active, be empathetic, be those kindergartners, because every person 
deserves the right to be themselves.